Right now, it is time for Food for Mood with Dr. Judy Werpen. Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com. Before her voice was still, a friendship in the shadow of ALS and Journal of a Duck Midwife. And ladies and gentlemen, on this Wednesday morning, here she is. Good morning, Judy. Good morning to you and a beautiful, sunny, cold morning we have here. Is it windy there? No, uh, it will be later on. Yesterday it was. Of course, when um, Prince William and his wife were here, it was torrential downpours. Poor, poor, poor people standing in the rain waiting to, to see them. But um, apparently it was a, a, a nice, it's been a nice visit so far, and they'll be here for a couple more days. Oh, okay. And it's very sunny, which is nice today. So, so that means that your mood is good? Well, my mood will probably be good. will probably be good until about, I would say, 345. You know, um, we are really the eastern end of the time zone, and uh, the effect of that is the sun sets now about 4 o'clock, 4.15. It's really pretty dark outside. You know, in contrast, in July, it probably set around 8 o'clock, 8.30, maybe a a few minutes after that. And the effect, I think, on on people's moods is striking. I mean, we talked... Um, months ago, Jill, about the fact that seasonal affective disorder, which is what I'm talking about, the change in mood, energy, appetite, sleep, motivation, uh, you name it, uh, it really can start for some people in September because the days are noticeably shorter as soon as we get past um, the beginning of fall. But at this time of year, it's no one can fail to notice that it's dark at a time when, um, you know, six months ago we might be thinking, oh, you know, I still have several hours left of the afternoon and the early evening, go out for, you know, sit down at a, an outside table, on the sidewalk and have an outdoor dinner, they go for a stroll, and the sun would still be up. Um, and I think uh, one of the effects is that we all, because of the combination also with the cold, we all feel that we have to sort of stay at home. It's very hard to get yourself to go outside again when it's, it's so dark outside and, and also cold. And people tend to, and, and this is one of the major symptoms of this seasonal affective disorder, this winter depression, is we tend to eat more, we tend to move less, we tend to sleep more, again, moving less, we lose interest in going to, into any kind of activity. Oh, it's too cold, it's too dark, I don't want to go outside, you know, rather stay home. Um, we, we sort of, in a sense, go through a kind of a, a human time of hibernation, but the effect is, uh, unlike that of a, a, a hibernating animal such as a bear, we don't emerge at the end of the situation of the, the whole you know, winter uh, being thinner, which a bear would be, but we end up being noticeably better. And, and you know, it's, the studies, study, many studies have shown that people can gain between, oh, 10 and 30 pounds over this whole period of you know, late afternoon darkness, uh, early sunsets. Um, again, the combination of feeling a, a need to eat, n- very little exercise because you, you know, just don't want to move because you're tired, you're really tired, I and mean, that's one of the major symptoms, and, you're, and you sleep more. And one of the foods that people want to eat, uh, uh, the, the category of foods are carbohydrates. And, and, and it's not that they are gaining weight because they're sitting down and eating a bag of uh, sugar cookies or you know, making a batch of Christmas cookies and eating them before they get put on a plate, but it's because um, we're, the, the reason is that, that we're choosing to eat you know, big portions that we need, and we also choose to eat carbohydrates in, in a form that adds a lot of fat to, to the actual carbohydrate. So if you have a, a butter cookie that you're making for Christmas that's 50% butter or a sugar cookie that's 50% butter, you're going to get an enormous number of calories in the fat. If you're making mashed potatoes for dinner or pasta and you're dumping a lot of melted cheese or butter, so much so, for example, the mashed potatoes that they're no longer white but they're yellow, um, you are getting an enormous number of calories from the, the, the fat, not from the carbohydrate. And I think it's very important for people who are going through this to recognize what's happening. No, you don't have the flu, you don't have COVID, you don't have the respiratory virus. You have seasonal affective disorder. Your mood will spontaneously get better once the days get noticeably longer, you know, in March, April, certainly by May. And you can't force yourself to do something where you have exposure to light and maybe going to the supermarket. That's probably not such a great idea. Or going to a community 
uh, educational program or maybe a, a community exercise program or simply you know trying to um, you know meet somebody in in somebody else's home where you have you know some kind of social interaction but the most important thing to do is to look at what you're eating how much are you eating and what are the ingredients that are going into that dish. I know you're not eating the salads because they no longer have any appeal. And you're probably, you know, no longer thinking that plain roasted kale is, you know, wonderful meal, wonderful dish for dinner. But if you are looking at roasted potatoes that are drenched in olive oil, you're looking at uh, cookies that are half butter, and, and you're looking at other high carbohydrate, high fat foods, cut out the fat and just stick with the carbohydrate. You stick with the carbohydrate, it'll make you feel better without putting on those pounds. But don't eat the foods with all that butter or oil or cheese or bacon or what have you associated with it. Well, let's let's talk about for one quick second. I think we've got about a minute left. Um, let's talk about, because it's also, you know, holidays. So it's like, here we go. Yes. Um, here, here come the cookies. Here come the, you know, here, here, here come the gifts that are, you know, um, uh, debatable in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, the the sweets going to make you feel much better, but uh, the calories maybe not. Yeah, you know, in fact, Jillian, bring up an excellent point. If you go into any store now, you see uh, a retail store. You see packages and packages of candies and cookies and cheese crackers uh, to give as gifts, and the recipient of such gifts are obviously going to open up and start munching on them. And I think that if you are the gift giver. You really have a responsibility to say, do I really want to give a gift that, you know, maybe, you know, tastes good, but really I'm giving it to somebody who I know perhaps will eat it and, and maybe not do well metabolically because they're too many calories. Do I really want to give that gift? Maybe it would be better to give a scented candle rather than you know, a, a box of, of high-calorie uh, uh, chocolates. Um, and if you are the recipient of such a gift, I would say to yourself, okay, I'm going to be tempted and I'm not going to open them or I'll open them only while other people are around and then I'll stick them in the freezer or stick them someplace where I won't be tempted to eat it. You have to be honest with yourself and say, I I know I'm going to be tempted with this and I've got to do something so that I won't be gaining perhaps even more weight than I might be likely to gain during the winter. I I think really you cannot put your head in the sand as it were and say, oh, it's not going to have any effect on me because come spring, and you are 15 or 20 pounds heavier, you're going to be really very unhappy about that. That's where the sad comes in as well. Right. You're not going to be happy. You're going to be sad. And it's how you can remember the acronym. Exactly. And so the thing to do is to say, okay, I have all these high-calorie foods. Uh, may, I would say you should donate them. To whom are you going to donate them? I, in fact, I would suggest to people, you know what the best way to give, the best kind of gifts, I think, are making a contribution to a charitable organization in honor of the person to whom you're giving the gift. Wildlife associations or environmental associations or your local animal shelter that absolutely needs the money to, you know, to buy food for, for pets, especially abandoned pets this time of year. I mean, it seems to me that is the kind of gift that will keep on giving as opposed to a gift of candy or, or chocolates that will certainly keep on giving in terms of calories and pounds. Right again. And Marshall is nodding his endorsement. Thank you very much, Dr. Judy <laughs> Horvath. Food, food for Mood. Of course, you can join Judy here on a Thursday morning on Robin Hood Radio. Also on demand, RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on Food for Mood with Dr. Judy Horvath.